What is up, everyone? We are live with the uh, Painless Wholesaling Podcast, where we have awesome people come on the podcast to let us know about their experience in real estate and how they can help us make our journey in real estate painless. Because we all know it can be painful if you don't know what you're doing. So we try to make it so you don't have to experience that pain. And today I have with me, I got Nick Jackson. He works with CallRail, and he's going to dive in uh, deep with us today to talk about how you can use CallRail to scale up your business, to get deals, to make money. That's what it's all about. So Nick, what's going on? That's right. No, hey, happy to be here. Thanks again for having me. As you know, Nick Jackson, so it's a little bit different than your normal guest. I'm not a wholesaler. I'm not in real estate investment. I work in software, right? Which is very important for real right. estate. And, uh, and, and little background, I've been at CallRail for a little over six years. Our big tagline is we help businesses turn more leads into better customers, right? Awesome. So that's the, the high level. And along that time, I've worked with real estate investors and wholesalers specifically because they're some of our best customers, right? Really? There's some things that we do that we'll go in and we'll cover that just happen to align pretty well, depending on, you know, where you're at, whether you're starting out, you're getting a little bit more advanced or, you know, you're running the whole gambit, bunch of digital ads and, and stuff like that. So it's a really interesting industry. Um, and I'm happy to, you know, provide some of the, the things that I've noticed that they use and, and that seem to be beneficial. Yeah, that that's awesome. Thanks for giving us that intro. Have you always been into the technology space? Because you said six years. So were you doing that before as well? No, not always. Uh, before I was in sales before that, it was not technology. And before that, I was a high school football coach. I was an offensive oh. line coach. I was actually at Harrison High School and Justin Fields was the quarterback coach in the line. So that was pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, different background, uh, but got into it because it's a software that's very valuable to a bunch of different industries and uh, anything that provides value is a good thing to sell. So here I've hey, been. Man. I love that. So uh, to, to help the audience connect with my man, Nick, uh, football coach, huh? Did you play football back in the day? Yeah, back in the day, played high school football, played in college for a little bit and then got injured and then just. You big guy or what? Uh, yeah, I'm six six five two forty right now, which is on the, the light end for me. You know, I used to be like yeah. three hundred back in the day, but uh, you know, thank goodness I'm not there anymore. Wow. So you were were you lying? Did you say you were on the offensive line? Yep, offensive line. I played center most of the time. And, and you were you were uh, snapping that ball, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I had uh, holes in my yard uh, from going out there with my dad and practicing shotguns. Dude, yeah. that's amazing. That's so cool. Because you know, it's cool when you meet with people on podcasts or virtually. You don't know how big they are, or anything really, other than their face. I'm, I'm not big. I'm, unfortunate. I'm like five seven, and I don't. I wouldn't say unfortunate. It's whatever it is, what it is. But you know, I five seven, like one seventy. I'm not. You would, you would crush me on that O line, bro. You'd, you'd take me out. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. I'd, I'd get two steps and fall down. You know, one of those that's things. That's awesome. Thanks to Football, but uh yeah, you know. yeah that's cool man so so you're in is it called technically sas is that what it call rail it is. is okay so so you're in that um industry and call rail how long has it been around for since 2011 wow okay and so, um was the target market like did it just happen to be that wholesalers started using call rail or were you trying to build this to solve that problem of like the all the marketing that real estate investors were doing great question wholesalers started using us so, you know, call was, call row was created for, Hey, if a business uses the phones and does anything with marketing, you know, getting some tracking in place could be a benefit now wholesalers. Uh, and this is why I love working with you all make it happen. You will, if you find something new, interesting, that could be of benefit, you will adopt it. And that's exactly what happened, right? Uh, from tracking advertising, you know, be it things like bandit signs, paid search, we align with that. So they found us and we notice, Oh, Hey, there's something here. So, you know, it's, it's uh, an industry that we've served for years now and we've intentionally, you know, worked with, uh, you know, we have a team dedicated to it basically. So it's something that we've certainly doubled down on after we realized like, oh man, there's something here. Okay. Well, I like that. So I'm curious, do, are you able to see the results in the data of like what marketing channels are working best? Does like CallRail have that information or is that only specific to like the user and you're not allowed to like see the results of, uh, you know, mailers, for example, you know, that are sent out? So are you saying like on the whole, would people that weren't using CallRail have access to that information? No, you, you as a company, are you able to be like, wow, we're seeing that when right now mail, it, like let's say a company that's using mail says they've sent out 10,000 mailers and you're like, wow, as a company, we're, we're seeing that the response rate on a mail of calls that come back from mail sent is this we should tell our users to do this because it's working now. That's what I'm curious about. No, hey, that's a great question. We actually do get that quite a bit. 
Um, but that can get a little bit dicey because depending on like who they're reaching out to or what the purpose of what they're doing, especially if you get digital involved, making recommendations, it could be a little dicey if you try and interpret it um, at too high of a level. But that question, so that's, that's a great question. And for our customers, it's basically depending on what you're doing and what you're trying to get out of it. That's what dictates how you set it up, right? Hmm. So, um, so to answer your question for, you know, someone that's, uh, they're targeting specific regions, right? They don't want to do the national paid search thing, right? Like, cause they, they really care about their dispositions. They want to make sure that they're targeted with that. It's about understanding, okay, which things are we sending out are resonating and actually resulting in offers getting sent. Gotcha. We should double down on that. And then it's a, it's also just the, the fact of recognizing, Hey, someone's calling us from our advertising. We have got to have a process in place to ensure we're answering these, we're following up and that this isn't slipping through. Cause as you know, it's, it's competitive and speed is like the overlying thing throughout all of this. So it's, it's tracking, converting them. And it just depends on what you're doing. So what do you think, especially with technology in the future and AI, do you think there's going to be a way for uh, when people call in and someone's not available to answer the phone or is there something to implement to, to have that speed? Because for example, if I send out mailers and I'm not available from like seven to six, seven at night to six in the morning, morning, cause I'm sleeping. Mm-hmm. Is, is there something that like call rail is thinking about doing? To, cause I know right now it goes to vo- voicemail or it gets redirected. Right. But yeah, that's a question I would have. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have things in place right now. So a lot of that, it gets to uh, auto response. So if you happen to get a missed call, sending that person a text message right now. Okay. We have other things that you can do as well, where you could see those texts. So if you wanted to after hours, respond to text messages, start a conversation that way, you certainly could. The main thing is, though, is if you get to that point where something gets missed, it's immediately following up with them with a clear message, right, that builds trust to know that, like, hey, I'm here for you. This is important to me. I'm a professional. So for us, we have alerts in place that will email you, right, the second you get a missed call. um, Hmm. And we'll also do things like send out text messages to those people and whatnot to make sure that you're continuing that loop and that you're not letting it slip. So is that like a workflow that uh, is set up that anyone can set up in uh, call rail? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy. And, um, you know, as far as the nuts and bolts, like if anyone were to sign up, you have a person that like helps you do it all. It's pretty straightforward though, as far as setting up the alert, uh, you would just basically click on alerts and then turn it on and that's it. Wow. Okay. So super easy. You don't have to like create some intensive workflow. It's, uh, it's just like saying, Hey, I want a response if I miss a call. Yeah, that that's exactly it. And, um, you know, it's, it's easy to set up the way our teams approach it is it's, it's intended to be product led. It's product led growth company, which is a, you know, its own thing thinking is, is the product can do it for you. And, and yes, it can, you could totally sign up and do it all yourself. We found, though, that our customers find more value if we teach them how to use it initially okay. while making sure it's set up and then they're good. As long as they know where the stuff is, you know, to turn on the alert, yeah, that's it. So tell me uh, how you teach it. Oh, that's it. A, a, so as we go through, we understand first, hey, what are you doing? So we'll understand someone coming in if they, if they have marketing that they need to track, if they're doing outbound call. What we do is, is as we go through, if it's something that they're going to need to do again, create new numbers for tracking. We tell them, hey, this is important. This is something that you will do again. So as you're going through it, this is it. Basically, how you think about it is just go through, uh, follow the prompts. And for your situation, this is the way to approach this. And we do that as we're setting it up for them initially. Oh, okay. Yeah. And as they don't, if they don't get it right or, or something, we just run through it again and create another one for them because we're, you know, we're setting it up. So we is do it. As onboarding? Is this yeah, like, sorry, is that, is this onboarding process? Is that, is that when yeah. that happens? Yep. That's right. Um, so of course, like if someone wanted a demo, we wouldn't be setting it up. We'd just be, you know, showing them how it worked right. and stuff. But, uh, yeah. If they sign up for a trial, that's part of the process. Um, you'd have yeah. a point of contact that basically just talks to you to understand what you're trying to do. Cause you can set up all sorts of stuff. It's really just showing you like, Hey, this is what you need. Can you tell me a little bit more about the demo process of like how that they would, someone would set that up. Um, like if yeah. they sign up seven day free trial and they want to learn more, how, how does that work? No, great question. So if you go to our website, there is a, a button where you can request a demo. So I would say like, if, if they're just wanting to learn more, that's going to be a great resource where, you know, if you just want to check it out, signing up for a trial though, same thing. If, if you intend like, Hey, yeah, this, I think this could be something I would need to track marketing and, or, you know, place calls, uh, whatever it may be if you sign up within like a few hours your person will reach out and then basically just hop on a call with you 
is that a new feature or have you been doing that since you know it's a newer it's it's a it's a relatively um newer process with regards to the way that we approach the setup because you know at first it was more so just hey just leave it to them let them do it you know kind of sit back if they reach out like let them know answer their questions uh but we just found that it was a lot easier if you just offered it up as a service just hey like well we just help you if you want to set it up basically and it made it a lot easier for everyone but. i'm assuming customer retention is it have you noticed the an increase in cons, the customer retention as well definitely um and and that's a you know i'm in sales you know i manage our, our sales teams and um retention is a huge metric for us and it is we know any way you look at it people that we speak to meet with and help mm -hmm. always stay uh longer they get more value they use the product more i mean you know it, it makes sense on its face so yeah, it's one of those things. Yeah, because I I think a lot of people that use like uh, products like that software products they they take off just because they don't know how to use it. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent, and that's that's what we don't want to avoid, you know, because we're not trying to push anything on anyone. You know, mm -hmm. some of the people listening to this it may not be a fit for. Our goal is just to hey uncover if it is for you, and if you need help setting it up, just make sure you're good with it. That's really it. So can you tell, like, uh, l let's say the majority of the people that listen to this podcast are, are new. How would they, I guess, how would they use the service to benefit them to get a deal? Well, tell me a little bit about kind of the, the topic that we're talking about of how yeah. this can help them win more deals. Absolutely. So when you're just getting started out, right, you, you might have a couple things going on. Maybe you're doing cold calling. Maybe you're using Podio to send ringless voicemails. A lot of people start there. Is, is that fair? Yeah, I, I, I've never really gotten into ringless voicemails too much, but I did, I did flyering. So that's, that's kind of what I did. When yep. I was and I was, I was going to bring that in from a marketing perspective. So here's, here's a real quick way. We create phone numbers for you. Like we tell you how to do it. You create them for the area that you're trying to target. So if you're sending out a flyer to, you know, Kennesaw, Georgia, you choose a 770 area code. You would name it Kennesaw flyer, put it on the flyer, right? Yeah. Now, if anyone calls that number, you know, right now, this is related to a property from that mailer that I had sent out. I need to answer this right now. You'll see it right here. And if they, if you miss it, you'll send an auto text to them and then you'll have that alert so that you'll make sure you're following up with it. So for your people right now, an easy win is, Hey, local presence, and then making sure that if you get in touch with any of these people on a cold call that you've placed where they've reached out to you from a flyer, you know, how they found you and you've ensured that you've uncovered like, Hey, is there a way that we can get an offer in place? You know, if not, how, and if we've got an offer out, are we in disposition? You know, where are we at with these deals? Um, so to start with, it's, hey, if you're running advertising, put a tracking number on it. You got to know where these leads are coming from and know that it's a lead. And then from there, have a system in place to ensure that if anything could slip through the cracks, there's alerts and fail safes to make sure that you're following up with them. So to start out, that's like one of the main ways that people would use us. So for someone's brand new, if they have like one flyer that they send out, they mm -hmm. probably will be like, let me just use my regular phone number. But call rail is right. useful if you're sending multiple different texts on flyers or multiple bandit signs or different sure. messages. Is that is that kind of how it works is you want to test what's working? So yeah. Can... And then that it, to your point, if you're in the situation where you are doing a lot of it, yeah, that's how you'd use it. Now, in the example where they have one number and one mailer, our product starts at 45 bucks. Mm -hmm. And that includes uh, five numbers in 250 minutes. So in that case, what we hear most often is I don't like using my cell phone. Everyone calls my cell. I don't know if it's a friend. I don't know if it's a buyer. I don't know if it's a seller. I don't know who it is. So sometimes I, I can't follow up with them with us. I mean, it's literally just, you know, in that case for 45 bucks, you get a number that you set up that you know it's what it's for. And then anyone that calls that, you know, full visibility into that. And it's not on your cell phone. You're not handling it with your personal device. So if that's important, right, if people get things lost in the mix using their cell, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons literally just to have it off of it. And I hate all the calls I get on my phone. And I'm like, I don't know who this is. So yeah, I mean, it's and I, I don't really answer my phone hardly mm -hmm. ever, you know, so right. it's just one of those things. If you don't know what it what it's about, you know, you're less likely to answer. So yeah, and usually my thought is like they'll leave a voicemail or a uh, text if it's important, right? Yep. So I'm curious, how would you set up cold calling? Let's say I have three cold callers that are blasting people and I'm getting a ton of calls that are return calls. And most of those calls are, 
I missed a call from this number. Who is this? How would you use call rail to uh, help you with that process? Like of all those people calling back and, and just inquiring about like what the call is for. We got that all the time. Great question. So depending on how they're doing the cold call, are you talking about where they like basically upload a list? They call a bunch of numbers at once and yeah, I know exactly. Okay. Here's exactly. how you do that. All right. You create a call rail number. And in those tools that you do that with, you can basically choose whatever you want to show on the caller ID, right? right. Use our number there. It's totally fine. Mm -hmm. If anyone calls or texts back, they'll be calling or texting back the call rail number. Mm -hmm. So you know exactly what it's for, what it's related to. And if you have like virtual assistants, even if they're based overseas or whatnot, um, if they're using the portion of call rail that is like a communications tool, they can be overseas. And if someone calls back from that number, they'll know what it was related to, what it was about. And then they can start that process to see, you know, if it's someone looking to sell or whatnot. And would they, could you set up a, a response, like a text message response to all those people calling back? Absolutely. So if they call back and, and you missed it, mm -hmm. like missed the call, absolutely. Okay. You set up that text response like, hey, you know, so sorry we missed your call. Like, it's very important to us. We will be back to you momentarily. And then that would typically trigger an email also to oh, wow. those people. Hey, guys, you missed a call. Like, yes, you're to your team, correct? Right? Yes. Let's see. So they get a text message. Does, does CallRail charge for text messages that are sent because of the, uh, the response, like the if a missed call? Yeah. So this is a little bit in the weeds, depending on the mix of products that you're using. Um, we have one, um, which is really, it's it's not like the communications tool. It would just be to know that it, it was a callback from one of these numbers, but right. answer a different system. In that case, yeah, there's a component. We include a hundred. And then after, I believe it's like two cents. Um, it's not a ton. And for the system that most people would use, because often they do have virtual assistance, it's unlimited SMS. Hmm, cool. It's not applicable, but yeah, that's depending on the nature, you know, that's one of those things that we would just see if it makes sense for you. And if it did, help you get it going. Have you noticed uh, any big wholesaling companies or not even big, any wholesaling companies using a call rail as a CRM versus like a Podio or going into uh, using like HubSpot, any of these other CRMs? Great question. So no. And, and the reason for that is it, you'll see it sometimes like at a smaller scale, but at a large scale, um, a CRM has one very uh, important capability that we don't have. And that's the, the final revenue, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, how much did you actually sell that property for? And at a small scale, you can totally do that in CallRail. Like you just put it on the thing or mm -hmm. on the contact, right? But at a large scale, what they'll do is they'll use CallRail. It's totally fine. And just integrate with their CRM. Got it. So Podios, whatever. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It was just, I think I, there was like one coach, I don't know if you've heard of him, Alex Jungblood, but he, he tells his students to, that are new to use, at least as far as I know, to use it as a CRM in the beginning. So that's I didn't know. Totally, that. totally tenable. Like, yeah. And in, in, in the beginning, that's absolutely good messaging. Um, because in the beginning, you know, it's not quite to the scale of, of where like you can't manage it and you need like your billing automated into it and stuff like that. Right. And as far as knowing how they came in, and what's been done since yeah it can absolutely be a really useful tool for that awesome well what what else can you give the audience that would help them um to understand how to use call rail or a calling service in general uh hopefully it's call rail right to get a deal w what else can you tell us about that no and and this gets back i listened to your last uh, show with michael mcdonald Mm -hmm. So it gets back to, hey, if if people are reaching out to you in some fashion, you need to understand if you're marketing, which marketing channel drove it. Right. That's, that's very important. How did they find me? And then from there, you have to have a system in place to ensure that they're being followed up with very fast and that you are able to ensure they're moving through the process quickly as well. So all that means, right, is a system of alerts, whether it be to the person that called you, your internal team, and a system where you can go back and have a record to make sure that you're converting everything, you know, within reason that could be. So it's it's really just about tracking, visibility, and in having something in place to move the deal along because that's that's really the big trend we see i love it and it sounds like a common theme of what you're saying is speed it, it's because these people are calling and from my experience they don't just call one mailer or one pandit sign or one pay-per-click ad they call probably a couple if especially if you're not responding quickly <laughs> Yeah. And that's exactly right. I mean, you know how it goes. It's like that for a lot of stuff. If you need a plumber, you call multiple. If you're, if you need to sell your home, you need to sell your home 
you know, you're not just going to call one person and be like, call me back. So, and the, and the only way I would say to mitigate that is like, if you answer that thing quick and you solve that issue for that seller or that plumber or whatever quickly, and they're like, it's not worth my time. But if you're going to get calls and not be quick to them and you, you hope they'll be around in two days or a day, you know, maybe someone's already that good that they're able to get it done. So uh, yeah. my advice is for anybody listening to this is like, if you're going to spend money on marketing, you 100% have to be spe- have speed. It's people data speed. You have to have good people on your team if you're building a team out great data and then speed is going to set you apart because again you're spending money you got to get back to it or i'm going to get it or someone else is going to get it yep that's exactly right it's awesome man well i i've I've asked a lot of questions that i had on my mind is there anything i know you go on a couple podcasts there anything specific that you guys try to uh, that you specifically try to get out there that you want people to know about with call rail or that you like to talk about Well, as far as uh, what I'd like people to know, um, I would say that there's a lot of noise out there, Mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of different softwares and things like that. If you're evaluating softwares, uh, I would say, you know, before moving forward, when you're evaluating it, just say, hey, was this person focused on understanding my business, my needs, and simply helping me address those and get where I need to be? Or did it seem like they were just telling me about them the whole time? Mm -hmm. So I guess that's just just something I've noticed uh, in going through, you know, talking with different types of companies, and that's what my experience is in. So if anyone is evaluating any of these tools, uh, just be looking out for, hey, what is the viewpoint of the person I'm talking to? Are they making this about how I can improve, or is it all about them? If it's all about them, probably not in the right spot. So... Curious about competition, maybe evaluating other uh, people, other companies. Um, do you find that your pricing is competitive, overpriced, underpriced to the competition? Because I don't really, can't really think of too many other services other than CallRail that I would use for marketing. Curious to how you guys do against the competition. Uh, we tend to be uh, very competitive. I'll, okay. I'll put it that way as far as the pricing is concerned, um, especially at the scale at which you know most people would be using it for, for wholesaling and that sort of thing. Um, so price is not something that we would typically see uh, as an objection coming up too much. Um, and nor functionality. I mean, the people that created our product were very smart. Uh, you know, so it works well. So yeah, um, which is super important. The functionality, you got to like have a good experience, right? Or people will, will bail if, even if it's cheaper, if it's not easy to use, it's not worth it. Right. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. Cool. Well, do you have any, um, I guess we can wrap up, but do you have anything left that you want like a gold nugget or something like a tip you want to leave with the, the investor thrive audience, the painless wholesaling people out there? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say, you know, it, I, Heard you and Michael McDonald talking the other day. Whenever uh, you're going through one of these like programs to get something going, um, if it seems way too good to be true, it probably is. And if you're paying a lot more for that person than anything else, you know, be wary. If, if there's anything I can give that would be relevant, you know, for your audience, and I think you know what you've got yeah. going on and everything I've heard, you all are doing it the right way. So just you know, hey, be wary. Make sure you're you're objectively evaluating. Like, is this a process I can do? And then after that, just start. A lot of people that come to us, they they haven't got, they haven't really, they've they've looked too much, and they haven't just just start. Yeah, that's usually once people start learning. Um, so if that's helpful for your audience, you know, that's what I've got. I think it's most relevant. Bro, that is extremely helpful because, you know, I coach a lot of people. I teach people how to get started and get their first deal. And a lot of them, they come and they want to learn and they'll just go and I'll be like, what questions do you have? And a lot of them don't have questions, right? And that comes down to they're, they're not taking action and they don't know what questions to ask. They're just like, I'm just here to soak it all in. It's like, well, if you, I guarantee you, if you made a thousand cold calls right now, now, over the next week, you would have thousands of questions because you would say, okay, what do I say to this? What do I do to this? How do I use this? All these calls are coming back. How do I respond? So a lot of the time people just want to soak in information and they feel like they're doing something when, like you said, the learning starts once you pick up the phone, take the action. And, uh, and that's, that's how I got started. I got started by just knocking doors and saying, do you want to sell your house? And I had no idea what was after that, but I just needed to find someone that sold their house that was selling. Right. See, that's, that's freak. That's awesome, man. That's why you know, I love working uh, with this industry because, you know, like you just made it happen. And that's the thing. Once you start trying to make it happen, that's when you have the relevant questions uh, that exactly. actually need the answers. So yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah. If you knock a hundred doors and no one wants to sell, you sit there and you're like, 
mm, am I saying something wrong? It was my pitch suck. Do I not know what I'm doing? Then you have, you're like, try to reevaluate. So it's so true that like, once you take that action, you're like, okay, I can't spend all day cold calling people when I don't know what to say. I got to practice something. So that's just an example. And I'm sure it's the same way with your product. Like people got to use it in order to know like, okay, the best way to like keep it and, and utilize it. So Absolutely. cool. Well, Hey everybody, it was awesome to having call rail on here. Usually I have guests that uh, are, are industry, like are in the industry, but I think it's uh well, I guess like investing, but this is really cool to have them. Cause I I've used call rail. I think they're awesome. I will just be transparent. Like I have a CRM that has the a capability that works for our company, but I know I've used CallRail. I think it's an amazing product. That's why I have you guys on here. I think it's a great thing to use, especially if you're doing multiple marketing channels. The strategy that I use right now, it's it's pretty low key on the marketing side because the market shift happen. I've, I've gone more into like a low marketing and more relationship based with my cell phone, but especially when the market, when I go back into doing more uh, marketing, call rail is a perfect solution to being able to track everything. Yep. And uh, no, it was a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks again, uh, Nathan, for having me on. If anyone wants to check call rail out, go onto our website. Uh, you can request a demo or sign up uh, for a free trial. I believe Nathan has an affiliate link as well. Yeah. Um, when, when we post this, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll throw it in there. And if you guys are listening to this and it was, this has already happened, we'll just reach out to me if you need that link or go to call rail. I'm sure you can tell them that you heard it from here and uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll hook me up. They hook me up because uh, we're good. We're good buddies, you know? So, yeah. all right. Thanks everybody. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right. Thanks. See ya. See ya. See ya.